is a rare circumstance for y'all in the audience. We have missing enough members that we're required by law to have a majority group. There's seven council people and a mayor, which I don't vote. We don't have four. So we will not be able to have an official town meeting tonight. I am going to run the meeting and give out some presentations and awards and let the Boy Scouts come up and we'll do the invocation. But after that, this is not an official meeting. I'm not calling an official meeting now. But the meeting will end at that time and we will not be able to address any of the agenda items that are on the agenda. But without a quorum by state law, we, we cannot hold it a meeting. So I'm going to start off like we do most meetings. If everyone want to rise for an invocation. <coughs> I'll be saying the invocation. Bow your heads, please. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to gather in this room. We ask your blessings on this gathering. We ask that you guide and direct our meeting so it's full of wisdom, productivity, and goodness for everybody. Thank you for helping us to accomplish our work and goals. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask the uh, scout troop. 767 Isaac Wells to come forward and lead us in our invocation. Face the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we're going to recognize promotions. Sergeant Brian Branovich and David R. Johnson. And I'm going to ask Chief Scott to come up to the front, please. And those gentlemen to come up also. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We would ask that Mr. Mr. Mayor and the council recognize what is promoted Lieutenant Obranovich and Sergeant David Johnson in recent promotions that they go through the uh, traditional swearing in for those positions and their significant others be allowed to pin their badges on their chest as is traditional in the Smithfield Police Department. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, that's very good. All right, gentlemen, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. I David Johnson. Do solemnly swear, Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will continue to be faithful and bear true allegiance. That I will continue to be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers and authorities which are. And to the constitutional powers and authorities which are. Or may be established for the government thereof. Or may be established for the government thereof. That I will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend. That I will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend. The Constitution of said state. The Constitution of said state. Not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States. Not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be alert and vigilant. And that I will be alert and vigilant. To enforce the criminal laws of this state. To enforce the criminal laws of this state. That I will not be influenced in any manner. That I will not be influenced in any manner. On account of prejudice, bias, or prejudice. Personal bias or prejudice. On account of personal bias or prejudice. I'm sorry for that. Not a problem. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Execute the duties of my office. Execute the duties of my office. As a lieutenant or sergeant of the as Smithfield Police Department. As a sergeant of the Smithfield Police Department. According to the best of my skills, abilities, and judgment, so help me God. According to my skills, abilities, and best of my judgment, so help me God. So help me God. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a mouthful, and I read it too fast sometimes. It's, it's, it's a lot of work to be a policeman. These guys deserve every bit of recognition they can. Chief, I'll let you hand these out. This is just for Oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong ones. Yeah. Okay. All right. What else do we have? Anything? Yes, there's badges. I don't have them. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you saw it. Is this for this one?
All right, guys. Thank you very much. As mayor, I get to do this, it's, 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 and I'm, I'm always messing things up, but it's a lot of fun. I'm going to administer the oath of office for a new police officer, Miguel Rintas. How did you say that? Renteria. Renteria. Mm -hmm. This time, we'll, we'll see if we do this right. Raise your right hand. I, state your name. I, Renteria. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will continue to be faithful and bear true allegiance. And that I will continue to be faithful and bear true allegiance. To the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers and authorities which are. And to the constitutional powers and authorities which are. Or may be established for the government thereof. Or may be established for the government thereof. Thereof. That I will endeavor to support. That I will endeavor to support. Maintain and defend. Maintain and defend. The constitution of said state. Constitution of Not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States. Not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be alert and vigil. And that I will be alert and vigil. To enforce the criminal laws of this state. To enforce the criminal, the criminal laws, laws of, of this state. state. And that I will not be influenced in any manner. And that I will not be influenced in any manner. On account of personal bias or prejudice. On account of any bias personal, bias personal bias or prejudice. Or prejudice. And that I will faithfully and impartially, and that I will faithfully and impartially execute the duties of my office, execute the duties of my office of the Smithfield Police Department, the Smithfield Police Department, according to the best of my skills, according to the best of my skills, abilities and judgment, ability and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. <clears throat> Congratulations. <laughs> guys' hands, that'd be great. Chief, do I have a second copy? Is that for him? She gets that. Okay. Congratulations. At this time, we have one more presentation for Margaret Marshall of the Public Library of Johnson County would like to speak. Mm -hmm. Come on up. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to thank the council for letting me come and speak to you tonight. Um, I wanted to talk to you about several grants and awards that we have won recently and let you know what's going on at the library. Um, first of all, we have two grants that are awarded through federal money, and I'm going to read you specifically the way I'm supposed to say this because this is how you have to do it with these grants. These grants were made possible through the funding from the Federal Institute of Museum and Library Services, or IMLS, under the provisions of the Library Services and Technology Act, which is LSTA, and administered by the State Library of North Carolina, a division of the Department of Cultural Resources. Okay. What we got were two easy grants. One was called the Easy Literacy and Lifelong Learning Grant. It is going to allow us to establish literacy centers 
focused on adult populations in strategic locations throughout Johnston, Harnett, and Sampson counties. Working with our partner institutions, which would be the affiliated libraries in Johnston County, the Triangle South Literacy Works, which is located in Harnett County, the Harnett and Sampson County Public Libraries, and the Partnership for Children in both Johnston and Sampson counties, Literacy tutors and students using our centers will have easy access to adult literacy materials. We hope to have these centers in place by March of 2016. We'll be, we will be buying books and computers to have at each one of the libraries and institutions listed as our partners. Um, this grant totals around $43,200. Um, we do not have a literacy council in Johnston County, and it has been my dream since I came in 2003 to see some form of literacy council here. We have been working with what used to be called Harnett Council, Harnett Literacy Council, and is now Triangle South Literacy Works. And they will be coming in and tutoring students in Johnston and Sampson counties where they also do not have a literacy council. We have also worked with the um, Triangle Literacy Council, which used to be the Wake County Literacy Council, and they too will be coming into Johnston County to tutor our people. So I'm really excited about this. Adult literacy seems to get under the table quite often, and um, now we want to give these people an opportunity to learn in a, a comfortable setting. Our second LSTA grant is for the Cardinal Migration Grant, which will allow us to join NC Cardinal, which is a growing consortium of North Carolina public libraries with the goal of sharing resources and expanding opportunities through a single online catalog. We anticipate moving to this system by the end of May 2016. This will put us in with about 32 other libraries all sharing a catalog and materials which means that if there is a book in Buncombe County that one of our patrons wants we will be able to borrow that book from Buncombe County and if we have one that they want they can borrow it too so um, that's pretty exciting um, let me see then we also received a two thousand dollar grant um, from the Kara Lee Powell Priest Endowment for Johnston County, which was made possible by the Johnston County um, Community Foundation, part of the North Carolina Community Foundation. That grant is going to be used to purchase downloadable audiobooks uh, that will be available for our patrons on our 3M ebook platform. We already have ebooks. This will be e downloadable audiobooks so that you can put it on your phone and listen to it. Um, as you're on your treadmill, which I'm sure you're all doing. Um, and our last thing that we won was an award was given to us because of um, a contest called the uh, Love Your Library Contest, sponsored by Cersei Dynex, which is a library system company. Um, the annual Love Your, Liter Your Library Contest allows library users from all over the world to submit a nomination letter or video to show just how much they appreciate and love their libraries. And we want to thank our patron who nominated us, Miss Sarah Edwards, who is here in the audience. And her letter was a winner and it won $250 for the library. So we were very excited about that. So that's really all I wanted to do. I come to these meetings every month and I sit here and don't do anything. So I thought, we've got good news and I'd like to share it. So that's it. Thank Looks you. Like you. Thank you. Sure. All right. At this time, we've covered most of the items that, that we can cover for, for an open meeting or just giving out awards. We, we really cannot conduct any official because, again, we don't have a farm here. I'm about to end this meeting early. Some of the folks in the audience are here about the Family Life Center. And if you'd like to stay after the meeting, the city manager and myself can, can meet with you or any other uh, council member who want to. But we won't be able to conduct any official business at that time. But, but we can have a conversation. So if you'll stay afterwards, if you want to, we'll, we'll talk to you. Uh, 
Uh, at this time, well, I'm, Mayor, can we can we can we still do the citizen comments? If oh yeah, concerned? yeah. I'm so sorry. So anybody here for citizens' comments? Thank you, uh, Councilman. I'm Sarah Edwards, Director of Downtown Smithfield Development, and I wanted to report to y'all that while we had a great independent celebration this Sunday, July 5th, um, to those of you who may have joined us, I um, hope you had a good time. It seemed like everybody enjoyed it. We had a great show that because of weather had to get started a, little, a few minutes uh, late, and then fireworks started a few minutes early, um, but it was a good celebration. We had several thousand people come, um, and it was a good day for the town of Smithfield, and I want to um, thank the departments that were involved. Um, there was actually a little boy that was lost, and I didn't know about it until the situation was handled, and um, he was back with his family. So the fire department and the police department were both there making sure everybody was safe. Public works um, helped before and after and make sure things were as they should be and cleaned up. Parks and Rec had a huge part, um, and per in particular their intern for the summer, John Wazak. <laughs> um, he helped tremendously. Um, as Parks and Rec always does. They did face painting and, and games for children, um, arts and crafts and that sort of thing. So it was a good night and I hope y'all were able to join us and enjoy it. Thank you. Any other citizen comment? Nope. Tony? Blinding. First of all, I'd like to read a letter that was sent to me uh, by Elder Kenneth J. Matthews of the Shiloh Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. This was a letter he drafted to me this afternoon and following his letter, I'm gonna read a uh, statement from the East Smithfield Improvement Organization. His letter goes as follows. To the mayor, member of the council, Fellow citizens of Smithfield and Johnston County area, good evening. Tonight I wish to call your attention to the sleeping giant that has awakened within our nation and within our community. It truly has nothing to do with the flag, but moreover an attitude that has existed and persisted from the dawn of humanity. Prejudice. There has always existed an attitude of selfishness and greed that are elements of prejudice. The effects of greed can be felt throughout our society. Corporations have crushed the lives of countless people in their guests' quest to make a profit. As a society, we have sought luxuries at the expense of workers and their wages. We put our material comforts ahead of justice for others. God is not pleased with this. Instead of wanting to hear the truth, we would rather hear counselors tell us about how much more money we are going to get or what great legacy we will leave as a family heritage. It would be wrong for me not to inform you that the Lord wants us to repent of our evil ways so we can hear the truth and seek justice for our fellow Johnstonians who are still being oppressed. Greed has been the driving force behind much of the injustice of our past and present. So often society's message is get all we can, even at the expense of others, but the true higher calling for humanity is for us to seek out the welfare of the poor and the weak. One way that we can do that is fight against modern slavery and its ideals and continue to plague our society. This is clearly one thing we should have learned in this community by now, and that is that we cannot justify evil and wrongdoing in our community, nor those who still perpetrate it upon others. As I close this statement, let me reflect that over the past six decades, I have been connected with the town of Smithfield and expressly East Smithfield. I cannot remember a time when I observed a group of Caucasian males parked in a predominantly black neighborhood at a black church, taking their dirt bikes off their truck and race around the parking lot of that church. But this is what happened on last Thursday at Shallow Christian Church in the Belmont section of East Smithfield, in an area once known as Johnston Bottom. It was the attitude these young men exhibited after being asked to cease this activity and remove themselves from the premises. It was one of defiant disdain. No, I've never been, no, I've never seen anything like this until the events of Charleston, South Carolina, and the call for the removal of the Confederate flag. 
It is way past time for kumbaya meetings and time for a commitment toward actions that will eradicate the things that divide us as a community. I stand ready for the reactionary meeting so we can become proactive for the future of our community. And this is respectfully submitted by the elder Kenneth J. Matthews, overseer of the Shallow Christian Church here in Smithville. <clears throat> This is a statement from uh, the East Smithfield Improvement Organization. As chairman of the East Smithfield Improvement Organization, a group committed to the betterment of our community, an advocate for those underserved, I thank you for the opportunity to address you. As long as I can remember, our community has been known locally, regionally, and even nationally as the home of the Ku Klux Klan a group known for intimidation, exclusion, and hatred. The sign that welcomed many to our town with the words KKK welcomes you to Smithfield came down in 1977. Fast forward to 2015. Someone spray paints a vehicle with a racial slur and the letters KKK. We are reminded once again of the ugliness of our prejudicial and contentious past. Is this what we want? as a town to be known today. What will our elected officials do to ensure the safety and pursuit of happiness for all its citizens? I applaud our mayor, John Lampy, for his quick public response and challenging all citizens to arise above those who try to promote hate. Now you as town leaders have an opportunity and a duty to denounce individually and collectively the actions this individual or individuals displayed to stir up controversy and divide our town on June 25, 2015. This act was done with the intent of hatred and intimidation. It is a hate crime. We cannot and must not allow anyone to take us back as a town to those days of spray painting, cross burnings, mass road marches, and other acts of violence and intimidation towards people of color. We cannot change our past, however we can influence our future. Will that future be led by those who desire to do what's right or those who are simply afraid to take a stand? Join us as we stand with all who want a better community that includes all of citizens. Uh, thank you for your indulgence. Thank you, Tony. Would it be possible to get a copy of those letters, Tony? Certainly. Can you forward it to Shannon? I will. <clears throat> She'll forward it to the other council. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, members of the council, and members of the audience. I am Crystal Kempson Roberts, and I stand before you today with um, the president of our Smithfield Selma Chamber of Commerce. I, as the board chair this year, um, and we stand in solidarity with the comments that Tony Nixon has made regarding certain activities that have occurred. What I'll say to you as a person, as a resident of Smithfield, as a native South Carolinian, is that we have the willpower within this town to pull together and do what needs to be done in order to ensure that we feel safe in this community and that this community is welcoming. I myself live in a very, very diverse community and the children have grown up together and never has there been a racial slur. We've, we have um, people who um, come from Puerto Rico, Japan, uh, Yemen, <laughs> uh, Honduras, and Punjab, India in our community. And the kids are being raised by tolerant, welcoming uh, people lovers of humanity. And so I do know that this town has the wherewithal uh, to ensure that we do the right thing always. Tony was right. This is a sleeping giant because this is nothing new. But um, I will not waste any more time and I'll allow Rick to read the statement from the chamber. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. And uh, this is an issue that uh, I guess you might say has been with us for since the dawn of time 
and uh, the act, the, the, the actions in Charleston, South Carolina were horrible. Many, and, and I think most people that, that live anywhere in this country would agree with that. There are those, though, that uh, still uh, harbor um, other feelings. Uh, but the chamber uh, has developed a statement uh, that we'd like to just read, and we have copies of this that we'll be glad to give you, uh, that, contemns, that condemns the uh, hateful vandalism that occurred just a few days ago. Um, the Greater Smithville Sum Area Chamber of Commerce condemns the recent actions of vandals who painted words of hate on a personal vehicle on K Drive in Smithfield. This repulsive exploit is not free speech. It is hurtful, disgusting behavior and reflects terribly on our entire community and county. The mission of the chamber includes promotion of the economic, educational, and social well-being of the Smithfield Selma area and Johnston County. One of the main reasons people come to a community is the inclusiveness and acceptance of its residents. A major part of the Chamber's ongoing community vision is to embrace all people and cultures. We see the great diversity of citizens in our town as a major asset as we move forward into the 21st century. Our businesses realize that an attractive, safe, inclusive community is ultimately good for the economy and will continue to bring valuable jobs to our area. The Chamber salutes the efforts of the East Smithfield Improvement Organization, the Smithfield and Selma Police Departments, and the Johnston County Sheriff's Office in creating good discussion about inclusiveness, the roles and responsibilities of all citizens, and the common efforts of law enforcement to ensure continued good quality of life in our towns. We hope these efforts will lead to further sharing of cultural experiences and individual uniqueness with other organized events and programs. We expect that the perpetrators of this hate crime are found and brought to justice. A strong message must be sent that this type of activity is unacceptable and morally wrong and unwelcome in the Smithville Sum area. And I do want to echo what Tony said. We want to thank the mayor for his quick response uh, to, uh, to this incident. And then finally, the chamber looks forward to working with other organizations and the towns of Smithfield and Selma to focus on the many positive aspects of our unique diversity. And it's signed by Crystal and myself. Thank you very much. And we have, we'll be glad to pass out copies to you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out and speaking. Good people should stand up and say that. It's when they stop saying things that all the trouble start going. So uh, I appreciate everybody coming here and saying something. I think it should be done a long time ago. Also. <laughs> Is there any other citizen comment? At this time, I'm going to adjourn our non-meeting here and I will meet in the back corner anybody wants to talk about the Family Life Center. Thank you for coming. <laughs>